praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Look your left and right. Say, welcome to the Rema service. Please do not disturb me. You can have your seat. Praise the Lord. Before I proceed, I want to give honor unto who honor is due to. I want to appreciate my father and the Lord, the person of Apostle Peter Kouredé, for the great privilege given to me to stand on this early altar. I say thank you, sir. More grace in the name of Jesus. Today is 7 October. I will be reading Conviction, not Conception. The scripture taken from Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. Media, please, can you help me? Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. And I read. Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defy himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the Enoch that he might not defy himself. Praise the Lord. Thought for the day. To develop a godly character, he must be a person of conviction and not conception. In our previous study, we saw that vision is the key to character development. We also saw in Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 how Daniel's vision affected his character positively. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the inner that he might not defile himself. Daniel proposed in his heart not to defile himself, and this sense of purpose adjusted his character. Now, having the vision for godly character involving being a person of conviction and not conception, a person of character lived by conviction and not by conception, a person of character does not live by the general opinion and idea of people. Today, there are many people who do not have the mind of their own. They live by the mind of the world system. But in of conviction, see, if everyone decided to go to air, I would decide to go heaven. If everyone decide to collapse on the floor, I will stand on my feet. A person of conviction does not go with the vote of the majority. A stand even if it means to stand alone. A stand even if it has to stand alone. And to stand alone on the path of truth is, is to stand with God. We live in a world where everyone is following the worldly system of doing things. For example, if someone dressed in a particular kind of way. Everyone begins to dress that way. If someone does a hair in a particular way, everyone would follow that trend. This is the lifestyle of those who live by conception, but a person of conviction does not live that way. To develop a godly character, you must be a person of conviction and not conception. Remember this, to develop a godly character, you must be a person of conviction and not conception. Assignment 1. Avoid falling into the temptation of living by conception. Assignment 2. Be a person of conviction so you can have a godly character. Let's bow our head and pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask for the grace to live by, convic by conviction. Help me now to live by conception. Talk to the Lord that the Lord will give you grace. Lord, give me grace. Help me, Lord, that the Lord will help you, that the Lord will give you grace. Oh, Lord, give me grace. Give me grace. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to live by conviction. Help me, Lord. Lord, help me, that the Lord will give you grace. Talk to the Lord. Let the Lord hear your voice. Let the Lord hear your voice. For in Jesus' name I have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The chorus has been ministering a song titled Ascend by Victoria Orenzi. Remain blessed as you listen in Jesus' name.
Anticipation grows in anticipation for sons to get up and take position. There's no more room for procrastination. We must rise. Creation for sons to get up.
sing by the blood by the wine by the spirit oh by the blood by the wine by the spirit oh how do we ascend how do we ascend how do we ascend by the spirit by the blood by the wine by the spirit Oh, we ascend high in the mountain of the Lord by the blood, by the wine. Oh, let's lift up our hands and thank God for tonight. Father, we are good. Your mercy is endurance forever. Open your mouth and appreciate the Lord. Lord, you are a good God. First Remar service in the month of October. Open your mouth and appreciate the Lord. Father, we give you praise. You are a good God. You are a merciful God. In Jesus. Precious name of prayer. Break upon your word, Jesus. Let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name of prayer. Take your seats in God's presence. The limited time we have, we're going to study quickly. Still on the subject matter to pursue what God's perspective is as regards the apostolic ministry. Praise the Lord. We are looking at the apostolic ranking part two. The apostolic ranking part what? Hallelujah. We saw last week from our study. We took our reading from the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verses 8. We took our study from Ephesians chapter 4 and verses 8. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Wherefore he said, When he ascended up, I, he led captive. He left captivity captive and he gave gift unto men. When he ascended, I. Hallelujah. When Jesus was leaving the world finally, one of the things he did was that he gave gifts to men. Somebody say gift. Can you shout it? Gift. He gave gift to men. And our focus in our Bible study series is to understand each of the gifts that he gave. Last week, give us verse 9. There were some things we said. I just want to close last week's teaching. The Bible says, now that he ascended, what is it but? Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower part of the earth. Next verse. He that ascended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fulfill, that he might fill all things. Next verse. Then the Bible says, he gave some apostles said me say give some apostles and then he gave some prophets and he gave some evangelists and he gave some pastors and some teachers hallelujah we said last week that it is the prerogative of Jesus to assign people into these offices you can't call yourself into any of this ministry office. It is Jesus that calls you an apostle. It is Jesus himself that calls you a prophet. It is Jesus that calls you an evangelist and teacher. Praise the Lord. I have understanding that there are many of us who just love these appellations. You see, the work that God is calling us to, into, it has 
lesser thing to do with title it has more an abundance thing to do with functions it has also but, but you see christian in our small mindedness we love title more than the function it is the function that we expose to you that you don't have the spiritual quality of whatever thing you are claiming to be take for instance if you say you are an apostle and then you begin to understand the functionary of what the apostolic ministry entails you begin to understand that in time of capacity in times of where we now and spiritual in the spiritual capacity and spiritual quality you don't have what it takes to be called an apostle then what that translates to mean is that you will not know that you yourself you are just making a big fool of yourself hallelujah the reason why people love title and they fight for title is because they lack knowledge where there is abundance of knowledge and you understand the functionary capacity and the mach machinery behind the administrative administration of the apostolic grace you will know that there is nothing apostolic about your life and that might want you to begin to query god and it is a request of your prayers that you will not find out that first that you were not called as an apostle so i have said last week that jesus is the one that gives people those offices i'm aware that you have churches where they bring you out and they pour oil on your head and they say you've been called a pastor even your character does not show that you're a pastor are we together your leadership role in your family because ministry start from family bible say a man that cannot rule his house cannot rule his city so if you are a huge and colossal failure when it comes to your administrative role in the territory and jurisdiction that god has saddled you with and you are not doing well how much more the house of god so there are there are just many things that are pointer and a key indicators that shows that truly the hand of god is upon you we saw in first corinthians chapter 12 and verse 28 last week we also saw in first corinthians chapter 12 and verses 28 if you understand what i'm saying shout jesus, jesus. can it be louder and better jesus. so the bible says and god has said some in the church first as apostles he has said some first as apostles secondarily prophets thirdly teachers and after that miracles then gift of healings helps government and diversity of tongues i told you there are certain abnormalities that are find expression in the church that are not correct it's not consistent with the scriptures the apostolic ministry is not the head of any ministry the reason why people are pushing up and making so much announcement about the apostolic ministry is because in the early church the first ministry gift that found expression was the apostolic ministry it was the, because the people that jesus himself came to disciple and raised he raised the first set of ministry gifts and they were functioning the capacity of an apostles so they had proper understanding of the apostolic ministry so paul putting one or two together giving preference maybe to the principle and laws of first mission and then he said the apostolic ministry is the biggest among all ministry that's not correct hallelujah there's no inferior calling every calling of god is an eye calling are we together if you understand what i'm saying shout hallelujah, hallelujah. are we blessed so there are people who now feels that hallelujah since the apostolic ministry is the highest every church that does not have the apostolic ministry hallelujah is a church that is doctrinally no balance listen to what i'm teaching you tonight hallelujah they believe that since there's no apostolic covering and there's no apostolic leadership in the church that church is doctrinally no balance they believe that every church should be under the rigid government of the apostles that's not correct and the apostles who also believe that all the ministers are under them is also very wrong it's also what's that so we've been able to put all of those things into perspective last week and also last week we began to study the four classes of the apostolic ministry remember i told you the first class uh, 
the first apostolic ranking or class is the class where Jesus alone belong. We saw that in Hebrew chapter 3 verse 1. He was referred to as an apostle. So Jesus never came into the realms of man to operate and manifest as God. He came to represent human and to die for us and carry our sins. So he was 100% human and 0% God. As soon as he entered into time, he thought it robbery to equate himself with God. Are we together? So I was explaining to you as to means to prove that God is omnipotent, omnipresence, and omniscience. Omnipotent in the sense that, hallelujah, is the unknowing God. But the Bible told us in Luke chapter 2, verse 52, that Jesus had to learn the things he knew. So the omnipotent characteristics was ripped off him. That shows that he was a man. Just like me and you until we learn we can't know. But God does not need to learn to know. So Jesus came as man. That's why you need to learn. Omnipotent, the all powerful God. The Bible says, Jesus was telling us in the book of John, chapter 5, verse 19. It says, I can do nothing of myself. So he wasn't omnipotent. And he wasn't omnipresent because he was not everywhere. So the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, 3 verses 1, the Bible referred to Jesus as an apostle. And I told you in the apostolic ranking, look at it. It said, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ. So Jesus alone is in the class of the apostle. This was a, the first class of the apostolic ranking. Why? Because he had the spirit without measure. After Jesus, everybody had the spirit in measure. We saw that in John chapter 3 and verse 34, right? John 3, 34. I'm just doing a recap. It's going to be a brief teaching. The Bible says, can we read together? John chapter 3, verse 34. For whom who God has sent, speaketh the word of God, for God giveth in not the spirit he was a... Can you see the distinguishing factor of the first ranking of the apostolic ministry? Nobody again is there. So there's nobody there again? So if you look at Romans chapter 12, verse 3, in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, hallelujah, the Bible now told us that for I say, though the grace given unto me to every man, that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to us, sir, but to think so badly, according to us, sir, as God. So everybody had the spirit in a mission. And these are things that speaks in the result of men of God. Are we blessed? So we saw the first class opposed to only one person is there. Who is there? Jesus. The second class apostle, we spoke about the apostles of the Lamb. Revelation what? 21, Nobi? Revelation what? Revelation chapter 21 and verse 14. Give us the scriptures. The apostles of the Lamb, they are the second class of the apostles. Can we read together? The Bible says, and the wall of the city had 12 foundations. The wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The second categories in the apostolic is referred to as the apostles of the Lamb. Why are they apostles of the Lamb? These are people that were present with Jesus. Everything that Jesus did, they were there. They are the witnessing apostles. Also in this class, nobody is there. Nobody is in this class after this 12. Are we together? In the class of Jesus, nobody is there after Jesus. After this 12, the only person who exempted himself and was replaced was Judas. Acts chapter 1 verse 20. After we are learning the apostolic ministry. May God give you understanding. In Acts chapter 20 verses 1. You know what the scripture says? Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 verse 20. Acts chapter 1 verse 20. The Bible was giving a recap. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let the habitation be desolate and let no man dread there and his bishop trick let another take. So the first bishop in the Bible, bishop there speaks about pastors. When we say bishop, we are referring to leaders of pastors. A bishop is a leader of pastors. A clique of pastor, the head is called a bishop. 
Are we together? Although Judas had an apostolic office, an apostolic mantle, an apostolic quality, yet is built up. He had a measure of a pastoral ability. He was the first bishop, first pastor, name in the scriptures. He said, let another take. Next verse, please. Among the twelve. And the Bible went for that. Can we read now? So, can you see what the Bible says? He said, wherefore of this man. Now, we want to replace Judas. Judas have lived in compromise. We need another person that will take the place of Judas. Then the Bible says, let us look for. There's a criteria. Not everybody can come into the category of the apostle of the Lamb. Let us look for men which have complied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus Christ went. What, sir? So, we need somebody that was present while Jesus was there. Nobody is in the apostle of the Lamb after this 12. It's ready to occupy in heaven. So, if you say you are apostle of the Lamb, when the real lamb is only 12 that the bible told us is in heaven not 13 seats not 14 seats so in the second apostolic ranking they they are only 12 nobody then we move to the third class what do we call the third class we spoke about the foundational apostle and there we told ourselves that the foundational apostles are those who lay foundations the lay foundation of doctrines, foundation of truths. We saw in our scriptures how Paul said, as a chief master builder, he has laid the foundation, another built. He said, Let every man take heed of what they built. So the foundational apostles they have the responsibility to establish doctrine. And after the class of Paul, nobody again. So, should in case you come, you say your own ministry is to establish doctrine, then we should begin to ask you a few questions. Because the Bible said, Can we see Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20? You have some of your scriptures? 220. Let me see 220. Excuse me. And built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ Himself being the water. So, for every foundation, there must be cornerstone. And the, the cornerstone of what Paul built, Jesus is the cornerstone. So, if you say you are building water, another foundation, Jesus needs to come again and become the cornerstone. And he's not ready to become cornerstone again. He only became cornerstone one. So, you are the one that knows the doctrine you are establishing. Every doctrine is already on the word of God and we are to build on it. Did you see what the Bible says? It's all scriptures is given by the inspiration of God and it is profitable for instruction, for doctrine. So the word of God remains our doctrine. I don't know what else you are looking for. And trust is allowed, trust is not allowed. Either it's a doctrine of your church, don't wear your ring, don't put on your ring. It has been established. Go and look for it in the Bible. Many people run with what their pastor is telling them than what the Bible is saying. And what your pastor is telling you, if it's not consistent with the scriptures, it will put you in trouble with God. It is the word of God that has the final say, not your pastor. There are pastors who speak to you out of philosophy. They speak to you psychologically. In fact, when they are emotionally excited, they just mount the pew and begin to give postulation of things that are not consistent with the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? If you understand that, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So, we've been able to establish. Can we get our scriptures where Paul said, I built, let's another build. First Corinthians, what? 3 verse 10. Or what? 3 10. First Corinthians, what? 3 verse 10. So, according to the grace of God which is given unto me, as I have laid the foundation foundational apostles their ministry is essentially for doctrine and also building a system that will not allow encroachment into the church that is why he said timothy i've sent you to this place titus i've sent you to this place to put all things in order all the idea is to ensure that everything they do is consistent with the new testament doctrine of running the church 
So if what we are doing is not consistent with the New Testament order of church, then what we are doing is child's play. We will never experience the supernatural. We will never experience the power of God. We will never experience the move of the Spirit. We will just be coming to play in the church and play and waste our time. Are we together? I send the notes on Sunday and I ask them to teach you on time. Hallelujah. Because we need to have understanding of timing. Is God speaking to you? May the Lord help you. So we are looking at the fourth class of the apostolic ministry. Someone say the fourth class. Fourth class. You are not talking to me now. The fourth class of the apostolic ministry is the non-foundational apostle. Now say it with me. Say it three times. The if you are saying it, can you say it louder? The non was that? You see, in 1987, the Lord appeared to Kenneth e. Hagin of blessed memory. And one of the things the Lord came to discuss with him is the ministry gift. Because Jesus already knows that there's going to be a time where people will say there's nothing called the apostolic ministry. Sir, let me say this quickly. The apostolic ministry still exists. So long the Bible says, you remember what I told you? Give me that scriptures. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. If you look at verse 12, the Bible stated the reason. Give us 12. Please pay attention. Why did he give them the apostles? One, for perfecting of saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So, so long we still need to prepare people, then the Bible says, till we all come in the unity of faith. Have we come in the unity of faith no so the apostolic ministry is team in operation so don't join them to say there's nothing called the apostolic ministry i will bless we are looking at the fourth class of the apostolic ministry i refer to them as the non-foundational apostles say with me say non-foundational apostles are we together Although I've told you one, the first class of the apostolic ministry after Jesus, nobody. The second class after the twelve apostles of the Lamb, no one, sir. The third class after the twelve, nobody. But in the church today, there are many people standing in the apostolic ministry. Apostle, where did they fall? Of course, the non foundation was sir. You are not talking to me, sir. They have listing the non foundational apostles are vessels in the hand of God who does not have the full apostolic ministry, but they have a measure. Somebody say a measure. Somebody say a measure. We saw those who have the full apostolic abilities, like Paul, like the apostle of the lambs. These non foundational apostles, they are also apostles, they are vessels of God. But you see, hallelujah, they are people that God is raising this end time with a measure of the prophetic ability, but not like every or not, like, a, not like the other class that I've earlier was that stated. I want to say this in the early church it is the apostolic ministry that was pronounced is that correct so the early church have deep understanding of what the apostolic ministry is all about unlike we in this contemporary age we don't understand the apostolic ministry there is many hallelujah there are many unfounding ideas many misgiving hmm? false doctrines there are people trying to play with scriptures and building ISOs of hell that is not consistent with what the Bible says. So when Jesus comes to tell them that, Kai, this thing is not consistent, even at the rebuke of Jesus, they will be angry with Jesus. They will, they will be giving Jesus a revelation. I will bless. I mean, Jesus is coming to tell you that what you are doing is not correct. And you are telling you are quoting scriptures. You are quoting scriptures to the world. The one who is the world himself. So, for we to 
have a proper understanding. Let me explain to you. You see, praise the Lord. The word opposed to in the Greek, it means what? Apostolos. It means what, sir? You are not talking to me. Oh. In Greek, the word opposed to means I will not stay long. I just want to round up this section. Then we'll be looking at the characters of who opposed to is in next week. Hallelujah. That word opposed to means what, sir? Apostolos. Which in English it is translated a messenger. It is what, sir? Do we understand? So, in Greek language, anytime a Greek, if they are speaking their normal language, when they say, when they want to say a messenger, what would they say? So, even in circular world, they use the word apostles. An apostle referred to as what's a messenger, a representative, an ambassador, one delegated with authority eh, to carry out a set tax or action is referred to as an apostle. I want to get it now. Now, that will not take us to these scriptures. We are looking at non foundational apostles where blessed belong. Where was that? Because he has been telling me since in the car that is the apostle of the lamb. I should, I should put him at the apostle of the lamb. So I, I don't know how to tell any of the apostles to stand up in heaven. Praise God. Now, look at the scriptures. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 25. May God give you understanding. Amen. Look at the scriptures. Let's see. Look at the scriptures. Philippians chapter 2, verse 25. Can we read together? Yes. Yet I suppose it necessary to send who? My brother. My companion in neighbor. Fellow soldier. But. So if we remove the word messenger. What is that? So who was a for purpose? He was an apostle, but your messenger, and he that ministered to my want. So, guess what? <laughs> Paul was calling him water. Uh, what was Paul referred to a Paphratos? Uh, what is he calling him? If you are talking to me, talk to me. He is an apostle, but not an apostle on the rank of the first apostle. Not an apostle on the rank of the second apostle. Not an apostle on the rank of the wasa. He is an apostle on the rank of the fourth wasa. Just with a measure. Of an apostolic dimension. Why? He is delegated. Commissioned. By the Holy Ghost. To bring a body of revelation. In his own civilization and dispensation. So he is an apostle. But not with the same spiritual quality. As every other apostles. So. A prophetess didn't build any church. Did they build any church? Hmm? Was there any miracle attached to his name? Did they provide any leadership quality to any body of Christian gathering? No. But we saw Apostle Paul. Paul built countless numbers of the Gentile church. Went to missionary trips. Through his hand, God wrote special miracles. He did mighty things. Why? Because it's not just having the apostolic title as a name. But Paul has the apostolic was a ministry as a function. So he was able to demonstrate and introduce the reality and excess of God to them in his own time. Then is God speaking to somebody? May God help you, blessed. I said, May God help you, sir. Paul has spiritual ability. He was equipped by the Holy Ghost. And he was able to oversee churches in his own time. Paul was so anointed that when they planted church where there were no pastors as are there, Paul will stay with the church and give pastoral administration until the church is established, people are nourished and built in faith. And then they will raise one who has pastoral ability and hand over the church to him. 
he began to raise people in that order however there were people under paul who were pastor yet they have apostolic tendency you can have the calling of a pastor and yet you have a measure of the apostolic anointing and that does not make you an apostle but you just have what sir i, I can't hear you sir if you understand what i'm saying shout hallelujah So there's nothing special about apostle. I shout him blessed. I'm an apostle. I'm an apostle. Apostle means messenger. That's the lowest rank in any organization. When you hear messenger at university, you know what they do? They carry letter from one office to another. Is that correct? And so that's who an apostle is. We, but in our own case, we are called by God. Somebody say we are called by God. Oh, you're not talking to me. Commissioned by the Holy Ghost and sent with a specific message so apostles are not just apostles by title apostles are people called by god commissioned by the holy ghost and sent with a specific message to some specific people a specific time if you say you are i'm talking about the fourth ranking of the apostolic ministry essentially they are commissioned by the holy ghost to introduce a revelation to the body to the body of christ are we blessed? Are we blessed? And you see, may God help the church. May God help the church. Amen. Every missionary is a church planter. Every missionary who refer to themselves as missionary, some of them are apostles. Because apostles are those that God has sent with special grace. To start up a work for him. And then communicate their emphasis as the burden of the work that they've commenced for the Lord. Is the Lord speaking to you? May God give you understanding. Amen. So who are apostles? Mm, there was a there are people that was a called by God. Commissioned by what? So brother come and say, um, Apostle Ife Ogudikbe. Oh, nice meeting you. Nice, what's up? When were you commissioned into the apostolic ministry from my mother's womb? Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. What's your message to the body of Christ? Amen. What did he say, sir? what was the message he gave you to the body of christ then you don't know you're not an apostle to think about it you're not an apostle everyone called and commissioned by the holy ghost is sent with a specific message can i give you instance up to tomorrow everybody knew that smith who goes what is an apostle of faith but he didn't call himself an apostle because he was a plumber smith who goes what was a conventional plumber on the street who couldn't speak good english his english were bad he couldn't make good construct of english his lexicon were terrible in fact the wife was the one that god called and when the wife is preaching just to honor the husband he will say my husband is here please can my husband just come and share grace with the church and then the husband will come after the woman has preached powerfully, then the man will use 10 minutes to rubbish everything that the woman has done. But yet, the woman never discredits him as his husband. The woman kept on learning, honoring him, and he kept on calling him. It was the wife that was a pastor. And then one day, Mitsubus was heard that they are doing a camp meeting around their church area. So he told the wife, he said, I'm going to that meeting. I want to go and find God. So he got to the meeting and he had a counter with God. Came back as usual. And the wife would call him up again and say, please come and share this with Smith. And then Smith came. As he was sharing the grace, everybody went under power. The power of God flooded the church. And the wife said, this is not my Smith. This is not my husband. He went to that meeting to be commissioned. And he returned with power. He went an ordinary man. But when he got there, he returned an apostle. And the emphasis that God put in his spirit 
was to preach faith. There are people who were so close to him. Somebody said he met him one on one. He knew Smith Wigglesworth. He knew his life and everything. His only message was faith. Because when the Holy Ghost commissioned him, the Holy Ghost asked him to teach the body of Christ. He's what, sir? Why you have many messages? It's first proof that God didn't call you. You can't run in a straight trajectory with a burden for long. You play. You say they are chanting now. You want to join chanter. After they say there's a Puritan movement, you join Puritan. Abi. After they say they are doing what they used to do. Allow the holy memo. Only you. You are doing prophetic. You are doing. Never. You are just there because you are not called. Sir, when God calls a man, he wears them. What you want them to preach? They can't change it. Sir, are you aware that Smith Wiggles will raise more dead than Jesus? Smith Wiggles will raise more dead people than Jesus. He raised 23 dead people in his own time. If you die in his church, he will raise you up. He was that terribly anointed. Powerful with the anointing. Smith Wiggles said, he said, you can't catch me without the Bible. Anywhere you see me, you must see me with the word of God. And somebody monitored him, monitored him in this loose guard moment. And he came, he said, I caught you now. Show me your Bible. Where he brought out the Bible from, the man was amazed. You can't teach faith and not eat faith. He said, he said he says faith come by what, sir? And somebody said to him, says, Smith, I've been hearing about you. He said, I want to pray with you. I heard nobody can pray with you, but I want to pray with you. And Smith asked him, are you sure? He said, yes. He said, lock the door. They only prayed for five minutes. The glory that came, it was like an electric current. The man crawled to the door and ran out. He doesn't, the person praying with him does not have the spiritual stamina to host that dimension of God's glory and power. He crawled out blind, screaming. He says, It's not normal. Smith can stay in this room when the glory came. No, no, hallelujah. See, I was teaching them in the north and I was telling them about the anointing. And I said, you will not understand what I'm saying. So mistakenly, I swing my hand to where the keyboard is. It could not see again. It scattered the whole church in closing. I, I was just explaining to them what the anointing is. So I was trying to gesticulate. And the border was... Do you know why the anointing hit him so hard? He was looking for it. He was hungry for the oil. So even my gesticulation, he responded, I want it. They, he uh, cut the whole technical wire. I said, he won't be able to see you. He was just doing like this. So they had to pack him somewhere. That is what we are saying. Miss Miss was that anointed. Somebody say anointed. anointed. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. The apostolic is real. But sir, Smith was not in the first ranking apostle, second ranking apostle, third ranking apostle. Smith just belonged to the water. Non-foundational apostle, yet he shook ground. You see, hey, hey, Allen, you want to talk about? You see, John Nons, you want to talk about? Or Evan Roberts? Or Catherine Kuma? Or McPherson. McPherson is a woman who that you are expert in gossiping. You are your shadow, you are useless. Because Peter's shadow is not useless. You just come to church. I mean, there is the reality of God. You are here to look for who offended you. Oh, Jesus. You know, McPherson will be doing meeting and he will say the only people invited is people on weak chair and crutches. If you are normal, don't come. And from history, when they are done with the crusade, 
truck will come for days to pack crutches. They are loading crutches. They are loading crutches. They are loading wheelchair. Everybody healed. That's the founder of Foursquare Church. But do we have such reality? The Colgate City, the first lady is a lay pastor. Where is, is it Psalm 7? I was looking at Psalm 74 verse 9. Psalm chapter 74 verse 9. Oh Jesus, help the church. We saw this man. We see not our signs. Very soon. Because this generation cannot preserve heritage. God bless their day boy. In their time and back home, they preserve heritage. They gave us God. You, what will you give your children? Your courtesy cutlass? Or your courtesy pistol? Or your shop right picture? That's the heritage you want to leave for your children. Man, you live the useless life. These people left us with God. What did they leave us with? Prophet, we are tired of story now. We need action. We need what, sir? Action. Oh, Jesus. We need action. We are tired of just bringing storyteller on our pulpits. We want people that will demonstrate the move of God in an unusual way. I pray for you tonight. May God use you. Yes. Jesus, you didn't hear me. I pray for you tonight. May God use you. Yes. As I bring this meeting to close, many of our modern missionaries are in the first class apostles. They are sent out, commissioned by the Holy Ghost, and sent with a specific message. Hallelujah. Not all the missionaries are apostles, but there are many missionaries that have apostolic tendencies. May God help the church. Who is commissioning blessed? Who is commissioning blessed? Tonight, may God commission you. I said, Tonight, may God commission you. 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 I read of a man who went to a city. He spent one year in that city. Blessed. Before the man left, how many years did he spend? I can't hear you. He spent one year in that city and he built 50,000 churches. One year. Fire everywhere. Crazy about Jesus. And establishing people in the faith. <laughs> and there is another man that has been in ministry for seven years with 37 members. Seven years, 37 members. And the this statistic of the true of the church, 35 children, two adults, apostles of children. Seven years. How many years, sir? You know, there are many of you like that who want to keep God's work. Any church that remains in the church, they are not helping the kingdom. Any church that everything they do is within the building of the church, they are not helping the church. You must go out. Somebody say, go out. I don't blame people who don't come for a public meeting. They have a question to answer with God. It's when you get to heaven that God will say, Shebe, I put you in that place. Why didn't you join them to do what that has them to be doing? Then you tell God, say, you are very busy. God say, well done. Well done, what's that? Then it will not take that enter heaven. Enter, just fear at home. Fear, sir. Fear at home. Just take your yeah, fear at home and join yourself. It is time to go out. The apostolic, they don't stay in a place, they spread. And look at this. In Romans chapter 8, sorry, Acts chapter 8, the Lord is helping his church. 37 years, 37 members. Bless how many members? And Saul, read quickly. And Saul was consenting not to his death at that time. There was a great persecution against us, sir. Sir, they were persecuting the church, which was at Jerusalem. 
because it is an apostolic church in the midst of persecution they scatter abroad throughout all the region and they began to do what's a blessed i can't hear you now and they were scattered all abroad through all the region of jerusalem samaria except the apostles next verse please and devote men carry stephen and make great lamentation over him can i have verse three and so he made a folk of the angel of church in the midst of poor ranting and shouting and persecuting the church they were still preaching what does persecution transmit fear in the midst of fear they were still spreading the gospel going everywhere to get so safe establish people in the faith you know what that man did the man vacated ministry he said i'm done with ministry i'm frustrated how can i have seven members how many members please? 37 members for many years sir so he left the place he left the work went back to his country and as he was in country he was fellowshipping one day and god came and the lord said you are called you are commissioned you are an apostle you've been sent to preach this thing he said the reason why the work didn't work in your hand he said you lack knowledge of your inheritance in christ you don't know he said you lack knowledge of your sir of your inheritance what do i mean inheritance i mean the things that jesus gave to me and you when he died what are they safe revelation chapter 5 verse 12 on lord tosco broco tosco break this year revela tosca look at your inheritance may god open your eyes say loudly what is the lamb that was slain first my inheritance in christ is power so much power. power i can't hear you sir power. and the bible says i've given you power to tread upon serpent and scorpion the work was not growing because serpent and scorpion was treading over his ministry i've given you riches in time of what it takes to finance the gospel do you know what it takes to print devotional year every month the cost of running generator and going out for a crusade with your bad character that you'll be in your house you'll be asking people doing outreach today they, are, they came to your house for outreach you say it are you not supposed to be in outreach i mean you are telling them and you know there's outreach you didn't come out your frustrating attitude to discourage under from serving the lord all of these things are byproducts that you are in partnership with the devil and he says same with the love voice riches jesus died one of my inheritance is wealth i am redeemed to flourish redemption brought prosperity redemption didn't bring poverty if you claim to be redeemed and you are poor then we should call your salvation because one of the things that jesus gave to us is riches but the problem is that the church does not know how to collect the riches it is one thing to know it's another to know how to get it that's the difference between knowledge and wisdom knowledge is knowing wisdom is the application of what you know so there are people who stop at knowledge but no wisdom how to convert intangible blessings to return blessings oh oh and wisdom wisdom to run ministry <laughs> wisdom to manage people and tell the daughter of the devil get out of the church you can't be here you can't what's up and strength running ministry without dropping and you're not getting weary. the man of god was weary. that's why he turned back to his village <laughs> so blessed says great to come out to start ministry ministry that didn't work in a labor you are now going to echo man the airport of witchcraft where witches take off it didn't work where there's light it's where there's no transformer that will not work community that same point that government should give them a transformer and strength and honor and glory and blessings look at this 
May God give you Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. You need to know Paratas Kafila. Bless you in church. Let me show you something. Can we read to Christ? Therefore, if any man is in, can you read now? In. Someone say in. I can't hear you. So it may say in. Now look at this. In. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. In. Blessed. Read now if you're in church. Blessed be God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has blessed us with all blessings in every places. In. I can't hear you now. Where is the blessing? So outside Christ there is no blessings. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. The Bible says, I will have shown you many in Christ's blessings. And he has raised us together and made us to sit together in heaven places in far above every devil that stopped church growth. Far above principalities and rulers of darkness and teenager witchcraft. Can't you show your craft and you can't pass fine arts? I mean, you're a witchcraft and you can't pass fine arts. All your craft, you couldn't pass jam. And you are seen doing which? Is God helping you with wisdom? You see, in Christ, I'm showing you the in Christ blessings. The authority and the power that we have in his name. Jesus. And the Lord said to him, he said, bro, you've not maximized your inheritance and redemption. Then they told him, say, go back to that city and now maximize your inheritance in Christ Jesus. When they got there, they first said, in one year, 270,000 270, people joined the church. One year. When they began to engage his inheritance in Christ Jesus. Blessed, 270,000 people joined the church in one year. What he could not get in seven years. He got it in one year when light came. Nothing works in absence of revelational knowledge. Is God speaking to you, sir? Apostle, why is my life not working? The same thing with the man of God I just shared with you now. Not only that, blessed, in one year, 70,000 people were filled in the Holy Ghost. And then to the glory of God, in one year, he built, blessed, in one year, he built. <laughs> In one year, he built 80 churches. We are said to build churches everywhere now. Yes, I don't need you. I don't know, sir. What I need is God. So long God is with me, I will do much more. Gone are the days of let us go. Eh? Are you coming or you are not coming? Gone are those days. If you love the Lord, the love will drive the love of God is a force. Is God speaking to somebody? Who therefore is an apostle? An apostle is a messenger of the gospel. A representative of the gospel. An ambassador of the gospel. A missionary. Or one sent out on a special mission with a special message. Who therefore is Bishop David Oedepo? Is an apostle. Send with a message to the body of Christ to emphasize faith somebody shall faith if you are shouting it can you shout it very well if you are shouting it very well can you shout it if you are shouting can you shout it very well who is Kumuhi? it's one sent by the Lord to emphasize holiness in this end time is God speaking to you sir? Is God speaking to you? Yes, Who is Papa Deboy? One sent by the law with a mandate to emphasize the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and prepare multitude. Now check those man of God, those you are Bido Shaker, you are following. And tell me, won't as a Bido Shaker come to emphasize? To set stone for you? Or send anointing to you? There is difference between ministry and industry. There's also. Don't 
unsaid things that God gave you, freely have you received. Freely have that. Pray for people you expect money. Many ceremony you take 40 or free. Are you doing business with somebody's baby? On due advantage. Church and university, money. Now the church, now they are ready for you. There's no amp. You see, when you take one offering, honorably, somebody can give you a thousand error. But because they knew you that you like plenty of free, they will help you cut it down to 18 error. 20, 20. They are already ready for you. Any of free. There's no difference between your pastor and Allah Gaiduru. What a shame. What was that? If they remove Titan offering from the church, we many still be a pastor. We many still be doing God's work. If they remove welfare from the church, we still be coming to church. But say no lay pastor and no lay member. Is God helping you? You're going to pray tonight one prayer. Lord, restore back the apostolic fire in the church. Oh, my time is up. So, until the apostolic return, we will not see our signs. The apostolic ministry is laced with signs and wonders. Drastic and explosive burden for souls. Planting of churches that are replica of what we have in the New Testament. Father, restore back the apostolic ministry. Please, can you rise upon your feet? Shapakai Kavas. Restore back. Ramamakamibakabos. Pray. Yeah, I can't hear you pray. Ramakaska prekotosh kapai. Samina kumbre hekovai kanas. Shega de baraniya kumbre ikotivia. Barakapila stop. Tell the Lord to restore back the apostolic back to the church. Tell the Lord to restore it back. Let sina fai kamina skapretosh. Shaparatus kapreketonde. Ma bebe de gebre de 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 kilina ne kamina no gondosia. Parapakabundes. I want to hear you pray in the Holy Ghost for some time. Blessed, can you pray? Lord, we want the apostolic. Just pray for two more minutes. Something can be dropped. Open your mouth and pray. When the apostolic fire returns, there will be drastic and explosive manifestation of the power of the God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Open your mouth and pray one more time. In Jesus, no pray. Let me tell you this. In Acts chapter 5, verses 15. Sir, the apostolic ministry is a ministry that will face plenty persecution. If you are not lion at heart, you can't be an apostle. There will be many controversies. 
there will be many lies and rumors. The apostolic ministry is laced with strange demonstration of God's power. Read it. In as much that they brought forth the sick into the street and they laid them on bed and couches. That at least the shadow of Peter I mean the Peter was not aware. Somebody has told them it does not need to touch you. But let his shadow touch you. Something will happen to you. His shadow is heavier as his touch. Next verse. And the scripture says, they came also a month to that to be sitting around about, bringing sick foes. And they were vexed with unclean spirits. How many were healed? I can't hear you, sir. Sir, so when the apostolic fire comes, it does not matter the sickness. Why you are sick is because you are not bringing your sickness under an apostolic covering. Are we together? And the Bible went for that to say, Can I have it, please? Then the high priest rose up and they were with him, which were the set of Sadducees, and they were filled with anger. The apostolic ministry. We always attract us. Sir. What did I say? That's what is happening to our ministry. And they've not seen anything. The persecution will not stop us. Your bad character will not stop us. Your attitude to worship will not stop us. Your excuses in your mouth will not stop us. We are all out for Jesus. Now lift up your right hand and say, I'm an apostolic believer. I'm an apostolic believer. My goal is to get people safe. And to chase the devil out of our city. And you in secondary school, go back and chase every devil out of your school. Stop immorality. Stop gambling. Stop narrow bed. Stop drugs. Stop internet fraud. Stop every ungodly verses. That is why you are in that school. Are you a teacher in the school and you are dating yourself? Stop that nonsense. In your family, they worship idol. Stop that nonsense. You are apostolic. You've been laced with power. Now lift up your right and say, I have the power of God. Power of God. Can you say, say it? I have the power of God. Power of God. Why was the church of that man not growing? Because he lacked knowledge of his inheritance. God. Why is your life not moving forward? Because you lack. Now you have knowledge. Now begin to make declarations. No devil can stop me. All time. Make those declaration by fire. That's who you are. You are a child of power. You are redeemed to power. You were redeemed with authority. Come on, you are not ordinary. Come on, you are not ordinary. You are a believer. Make declarations by the Spirit of God. Make declarations by the Spirit of God. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Make declarations by the Spirit of God. In Jesus, let me pray. Just lift up your hand and bless Jesus. You see, if this thing enter your spirit, your life will go ten steps forward. But if this thing does not enter your spirit, your life will go ten steps backward and you still keep looking for prophets. The funny thing is that you are looking for people to help you who don't know God. I mean, the people you are running to, they don't know God. And you want them to help you. A man that needs help himself, you are going to meet him to help you. May God help you. Amen. May you not be going to those that you are to help in life. Amen. Just bless the Lord in one minute. Father, we return all the praise to you. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever amen shake the hand of your neighbor and tell them go and find out who you are in christ ah tell them you are an apostolic believer the lord bless you god bless you god bless you god bless you sir god bless you